One of the common causes of steadily losing power with an engine that seems to be otherwise running okay is that the catalytic converter is getting old and clogged. So here's our catalytic converter. And a lot of people, um, when they're checking the exhaust back pressure, tap into the oxygen sensor bung here. It's actually just easier for me to just drill a new hole, tap in uh, a brass fitting and attach the gauge there. So let me show you everything that's required. We're going to use um, a fuel pressure gauge, vacuum gauge. We're going to need some fittings. I'm going to use two of them to actually attach the vacuum slash pressure gauge to. And then when I'm done with the test, I've just uh, got a couple of other fittings here. I didn't have any actual plugs. So I just took some fittings that are the same 1 8 NPT and just plug them up manually. Um, the total exhaust pressure that you should ever really see should be under 10 PSI, even at wide open throttle. So for an area this small, that's only a couple of pounds of force. So all you need is something that seals. It doesn't have to hold a lot of force. So when you're doing the exhaust pressure test, what you're looking for is that uh, the catalytic converter is not clogged. If a catalytic converter is starting to get clogged, the pressure will go um, over 3 PSI. Typically you want 1 PSI or less at idle, and even when you get up to uh, 2000 RPM, run the engine at 2000 RPM or 2500 RPM, it should still be less than 2 PSI. So we'll drill a hole, uh, it'll be about a 3 8 bit, and then we'll tap it with an 8th NPT, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get installed. Alright, you can see here I have drilled the 3 8 hole, tapped it, put the 1 8 inch NPT fitting in, got the hose attached uh, to my pressure gauge. And if I haven't mentioned it already, I like to do it this way so that I can just swap it out very easily uh, without having to remove the O2 sensor, which can be very difficult if it's uh, kind of seized in there. And also I can allow the engine to run in closed loop while I'm doing the test. Right, and you can see the other side here, um, harder to get to because of the starters on the side and the O2 sensor is very difficult to get to. So it's actually easier even to drill a hole and uh, put in the extra fitting. Now you see I've got two hoses attached. I have a couple of gauges I can use, so I'm going to run them at the same time, compare them, maybe swap them over and see if they give the same readings or what have you. Make a little experiment out of it. So let's go ahead and uh, fire up the truck and see what we get. Right, I've got the truck at idle here. You can see it's as it idles down to low idle, it's well under 1 psi. Um, this vacuum gauge, but you can see there's there's a bobble in the needle because this one doesn't have any kind of meter valve. All right, so I've got the gauge set up so I can see it while I operate the pedal. I'm going to raise the engine speed up and see what happens. Steady's out, but no increase in back pressure. All right, so I've got my stick here to use on the gas pedal. Watch the gauge. All right, that was over 3,000 RPM. I checked the tack and it was still sitting at one and a half PSI. So uh, back pressure's good. I'm gonna let it warm up let the cats get hot and we'll see if there's any change all right the engine is at operating temperature cats are all warmed up I read them with my infrared thermometer still at one and a half psi so we're good Catalytic converter condition is A-OK. -okay.